The lips are among the hardest parts to rig. Here's a technique I've been working on. It relies on bendy bones, but should also work for games as long as you don't add bendy bone segments to the deformation layer. First thing to do after adding an armature will be to change the display type to bendy bone and make the bone way thinner using CTRL plus ALT plus SHIFT plus S. For better visibility, change the display type to wire in the object properties and enable in front. Changing the pivot point to individual origin also makes things easier. You need two little chains following the shape of the lips. You can turn on snapping to vertices, edges or faces to place them easily. For each side, I usually go for three at the top and three at the bottom, but the number is up to your character's needs. Once you've extruded them, hit shift in to align them with the world's positive set axis. Every future bone will also need this alignment, which appears to be the most logical and convenient for this rig. Put them in a deformation collection. Give them a proper name by going to edit and using the battery name option. Don't forget to change the type to bones and use the set name set to new. Then, extrude all of them. The newly extruded bones will become the tweakers, tiny individual controllers. Those guys will be the only ones to directly affect the deformation bones. Make sure that both bottom and top chains each have their own tweaker at the corner. It's necessary to properly separate the chains when opening the mouth. Unparent them and rename them accordingly. Put them in a separate collection and disable deform for them. That way, they'll be ignored if you use automatic weight painting. Hold out when clicking to batch disable it. You can make them thicker to see them better. Using CTRL plus Alt plus A, make sure the tweakers are roughly aligned with the deformation layer, except for the middle ones. It's just a preference, but since they're going to be shared by both sides, I like to leave those ones pointing straight forward to align those ones. Put zero in the x-axis of both the head and the tail. Copy and paste the z-value from the head to the tail. And hit shift plus n again to repair the roll. Then, parent each deformation bone to the tweaker at their base. I added the parenting options to my quick menu by right-clicking on them to go faster. Using if 3 in pose mode. Search for the Add with Target option and right-click on it to add it to the quick menu. Hitting Q instead of the CTRL plus Shift plus C shortcut is more convenient. You can even add the constraints from the list to your quick menu, at least for the most used ones. Add both a damp track and a stretch to constraint to the deformation layer up, using the tweaker at the end of each bone as a target. You can now add bendy bone segments to the deformation layer. If you select all of them, you can modify the bendy bones options in batch if you hold out before entering numbers or clicking on buttons. Four or five segments should do the trick. Then change the handle type from automatic to tangent. It'll allow you to deform the bones like curves, taking into account both the position and rotation of the handle bones. Now that it's done, you can enter the custom handles for each deformation bone. The start handle is their parent. The end is their stretch to target. There's one exception to this. The very first bone of the chain needs a different start handle. That's because the orientation of the tweaker will cause the bendy bone to curve in a weird way. So you can duplicate the tweaker, align it with the first deformation bone, rename it, and parent it to the original tweaker. This will be the start handle of the first bone. You can rotate this new handle and the tweakers to give the chain a smooth curvature. At this point, I realized I didn't like the placement of my bones and corrected it. This meant I had to reset the stretch to constraints length values. 
Repeat the process for the bottom chain. I think doing the top and bottom chains one by one helps to practice, even if tackling them at the same time would be quicker. To finish this stage, duplicate the top tweaker at the corner of the loops and scale it up. It will be the corner controller, shared by both chains. For now, pair into corner tweakers to it. We now want the individual controllers to organically follow the corner controller. To achieve that, we can use a big bendy bone, onto which we'll stick intermediary bones using copy transform constraints. First, duplicate the first deformation bone and scale it up. Move that new bone into a new collection. You can now hide the deformation collection. This new bone will be our BB chain. Snap the tail of the chain to the corner controller and double its amount of segments. It'll need its own end handle, parented to the corner controller. I'm going to start color coding the bones at this point because things will become more and more confusing. After swapping the custom end handle in the BB options, you can shake the chain by rotating the orange bone in edit mode. I accidentally removed my purple BB chain's constraints, but you'll need to replace the targets from the damp track and stretch to constraint of the chain by the new orange handle, and reset the stretch to's length if needed. When it's done, duplicate the two in-between tweakers and scale the new bones down. Let's make those green. Those will be intermediary chain bones, and you can put them in the same collection as the chain. Using the chain as a target, add a copy transforms constraint to one of the green bones. This little icon next to the head or tail slider is a pretty neat option allowing us to copy it. Transforms at a specific point along the bendy bone segments, instead of a linear point in between the head and the tail of the target. Enable it, and push the slider until the bone reaches a spot near its original position. You can disable the constraint and snap the cursor to the bone to use it as a marker. Once it's done, repeat the process on the other green bone. After that, select both green bones, and using CTRL plus A, choose Apply Selected as Rest Pose. It'll make sure their position with the constraint in pose mode is the same as the one in edit mode. Now, we want the tweakers to follow these green bones. The easiest way would be to parent them, but those won't be the only bones to influence the tweakers. So in the long run, it'll be better to have another set of intermediary bones. Whenever I run into a situation where I want a controller to inherit transforms from multiple targets or only one type of transform, I always use an intermediary bone. It can receive any type of constraints that would conflict with the manual posing of the bone, and its child can inherit the results while still being able to move freely. Duplicate the corner controller and every tweakers except the corner ones. Rename them accordingly, and give them their own collection. Let's make the new bones yellow. Parent the tweakers to the yellow bones, except for the corner tweaker. The corner tweaker can be parented to the orange handle instead. Corners will be fully dealt with in the part of the tuto. Parent the corner controller to the yellow intermediary corner bone. Next parent the two in-between yellow bones to their corresponding green bones. Voila! Now when playing with the corner controller, the rest of the lip should follow nicely. To make the middle of the lip look less stiff, duplicate the middle yellow bone. Make it blue and rename it. Put it in the BB chain collection and parent the middle yellow bone to it. Give the blue bone a copy location constraint, targeting the corner controller. Set the target space to local with own orientation because the two bones don't share the same orientation. 
and the owner space to local. Finally, give it a low influence like 0.1. Once the rig is symmetrized, you will have to duplicate this constraint for the right side of the lip. Repeat for the bottom lip, as always. Now, to make things more interesting, create a new bone or duplicate one of the middle ones and put it in a new controller collection. You can also add the corner controller to it. Place it just above the teeth, roughly at root level. The best placement may vary depending on your character. Give it a red color. This will be your top lip controller. Pairing the blue bone to it. To test if the placement works well, we need to see the lips in action. Symmetrize all the lip bones, and if it's not already the case, join your lip rig to the actual character rig. Paint the weights or use automatic weight painting. Don't forget to make sure every bone has to fall turned off except for the deformation layer. In this example, the mesh also has a subtle corrective smooth modifier on. It gives a better deformation out of the box. Rotate the controller down on the x-axis. The lip should fold around the teeth. I usually perfect this movement with a corrective shape key later on, but the basic bone movement should be good enough. The shape key helps flattening the lip and avoids clipping your shoes when both lips fold in at the same time. Repeat for the bottom lip. Changing the transform mode to normal helps with placing the bow. The top controller should be parented to the head bone and the bottom one to the jaw bone. Bonus in case your rig doesn't already have a jaw bone. It should start around the front corner of the ear and finish at the bottom of the chin. I usually give it a damped track constraint, targeting a little mechanism bone at its end, and parent the mechanism bone to a jaw controller. Let's not forget about the often corner yellow bones. We want them to be influenced by both the jaw bone and the head bone. That way, when the character opens their jaw, they will sit roughly at the middle. We could use an armature constraint. This one is a very cool constraint that can give an infinite amount of parents to a bone, with weights that can even be dynamically changed with drivers. Sadly, it comes with a catch. Any bone with an armature constraint must not have any normal parent. Otherwise, it creates a double transform problem. In the part 2 of this tutorial, we'll see how to create a master controller that can move the whole mouth around. We'll want our yellow corner bones to be influenced by the head and jaw, but also by this master controller. In order to plan for this, we'll parent the yellow bones to a special parent for now. This parent will hold the armature constraint to receive half the jaw and the head's influence, which will complete our basic rig. Duplicate a controller and place it roughly at the start of the gums. It should point to where the teeth meet. Give it an armature constraint and add both the jaw and head bones as targets with a weight of 0.5 each. Don't forget to remove its pre-existing parent. Finally, parent the yellow corner bones to it. We'll add more to this system in the part 2. The base of the lip rig is now done. In the next video, I'll complete it with a master controller, a better shape for open clips, and some more intricate movements such as pinching the lips, puckering, and a chewing motion. If you found this video useful, 
please leave a like and subscribe. Cheers.